Hello, my name is Anthony Shifkumar, and in today's video, I'll be showcasing the integration of the SIVA FSM300 AHRS sensor with the Nordic Semi NRF5340. Now, the FSM300 serves as a comprehensive AHRS IMU module featuring a 3 axis accelerometer, 3 axis gyroscope, and a 3 axis magnetometer. Now, it also incorporates a low power 32 bit ARM Cortex MO uh, plus uh, M0 plus MCU running the high-performance SIVA's IMU algorithm, making it the sensor hub software stack, as they call it. Now, most of the available examples of this AHRS are designed for the STM32 microcontroller. So adapting it to the Nordic Semi platform, which utilizes Zephyr, the RTOS, posed a little bit of a challenge. And in today's video, I'll demonstrate how I successfully ported the code to the Nordic Semi platform. I'll also share my connection diagrams and explain the steps I took to make it operational. So let's dive into the details. Before we dive into the code, let's have a look at my Git repository, which shows the connection diagram of how I've connected this. Now, the FSM 300 has a lot of connections in here. So the FSM 300 has all of these modules. It's got the ground, it's got you know the PSO, boot, PS1, I, um reset vcc this is um then we have the mosi connection so this is what we have behind the fsm module the connections of this to the nrf 5340 is based on the connections that i've just that i've shown in my github repository this is the connection to the fsm 300 from the nrf 5340 it's using the spi protocol now let's dive through and see the code so here i'm using the zephyr rtos and here we have a couple of threads running. Some of the thread is basically receiving all the commands. Then we've got to process the commands and then, you know, uh, write and send the commands. And, uh, and one of them is actually processing the IMU. So let's look at the FSM thread over here. And my code structure is also very uh, kind of more modular where we have the main function. And here I have all the drivers like the GPI, your PWM, SPIM to control the motors, you know, do the SPI interface. So this is more like the low level drivers. And on top of that, we'll have like the high level drivers. For example, we have the SIVA FSM 300 in the sensor folder, which is leveraging the SPI communication. So I've structured it in such a way that we have drivers and then we have sensors. And under the sensors, I have IMU SIVA FSM 300 and there'll be other sensors too, because this particular module will be designed in such a way that uh, I want to use this as an autopilot and flight controller as I keep building onto the code. But I just want to demonstrate how I got the FSM interfacing with the NRF5340 over here. So now the thread is running and the thread is basically going to call the FSM thread. The FSM thread is now located in the SIVA FSM SH2.C code over here. So let's have a look. I'm just going to close the main function. Okay. And now here we have the FSM thread running in the in this folder. So what's happening over here? So this is a loop. And once we have the command running, we can basically process the report. So it will do some form of waking up communication, which is part of how the um, SIVA FSM needs to be written to. Um, and once you have an interrupt, it'll basically see, you know, if it's basic, if it's, if it's waking up, waking up basically means as, it's, as the system started. And if the system is not started, then we basically do some, um, let's have a look at what this is happening. This will basically uh, configure the system based on some initial readings. For example, what's the sensitivity, what type of output you want, uh, what's the intervals at which you want to read and etc. And once all the configuration is done, then if it's not the initial state, then we'll basically do a lot more. It'll basically start to you know write data to the to the system, and then it will read that data. Um, and once it reads that data, we need to process that messages. So we basically say the reset is complete, and then we process the initialization. So this will be the SHI input handler. And in here, we will basically be doing all the reference uh, output. So here it will basically do the handling of, um, you know, what the payload is, you know, what type of uh, data we're looking at, what's the timestamp and, and how do you calculate, you know, all the data that's there because we're basically generating quaternions. Once it processes all of this information and somewhere in here we'll be connecting and calling the 
um, actual basic um, print event is basically the data that is basically being recorded. So for example, all of this is now the quaternion data. And you can see over here, I have over here, it's so all the quaternion data is basically running real time right now. So as I basically change this settings, you will see, you can see over here that the K is now negative. But if I turn this upside down, you know, the K will be positive. I'm just giving an example because interpreting quaternions is a little bit more challenging than say reading Euler angles. Uh, but you can, but uh, I'll do a video on, you know, how you can use this interpretation and, and, and process this data. But because it's an AHRS, it is not giving you just raw accelerometer or gyroscope readings. It is doing the sensor fusion alg algorithms within the sensor itself and giving us an AHRS, which basically means that this is now a computed attitude angle. That's why it's called an AHRS sim se sensor. So if it is completely, um, you know, uh, I, upside down, you can see it's positive. And then when I bring it out, you can see the K, uh, you know, a little negative. Now, just to give you a sense that as I change the orientation, the values are changing. That's really <gasps> what I'm getting at. And it's easier to just see if the sign changes to, you know, make if, I, if I'm completely upside down and if I'm up, upright, uh, there should see, be some change to, dim, to, you know, to indicate that. Um, so you can just have a look at the K value that's changing. So I can literally stop this because it's happening at very, very quickly. And then, you know, you can see over here. So now this will be minus R I J K. And if I connect the port right now and, you know, turn this completely upside down, and then maybe you know disconnect this value and then you'll see that the k is almost like zero and the, va the values are changing based on the orientation that's really what i'm trying to get at over here this is not how quaternions actually work it's more to it but the, the easiest thing that you can do is that if you change the orientation are these values changing and are they making sense like you know it's positive going to negative if you turn things upside down those are the kind of things that i think um should be kind of evident in at least in one of the ijk vectors Okay, and once we have this, now the way I've also structured is something called as SH2. The SH2 is basically the sensor hub two, and this sensor hub two is I've actually taken it from the original Siva FSM Git repository. So this is a module, and it's taking all of this information so that I can process it in my in my in my in my repository. There's no point rewriting some of the code because this is at a very low level um, and it's doing all the computations and stuff. So I'm just feeding in all the data that I need so that it does all the computation and I don't have to write all of this by myself. So the SIVA FSM SH2 is basically doing all the print events and all that cool stuff. And many of these data within this is also taken from the SH Sensor Hub 2 module. Now, since this is for the F, since this is designed for the ST32, I had to make a lot of change. I won't say a lot of changes, but had to make it compatible with the Zephyr RTOs and uh, Nordic Semi. So there will be some, you know, changes that I made that um, that that will only be that you know that basically is a little different from what the original uh, code is. So nevertheless, I'm able to get this working, and uh, I'm really looking to uh, testing this on my drone. Um, and I and I do believe this is an inexpensive AHRS because uh, getting an AHRS is generally going to be a little costly. Even though there's a Bosch version for of this, the Siva I think with their software and the SH2, the Sensor Hub Fusion algorithm, I believe is a little better. It's it retails for around hundred dollars, but I do believe um, it's quite quite worth it. So yeah, that's really what I have wanted to show you. Now, interfacing with the sensor is not necessarily very easy, but once you get it working, it does give you very clean output. Um, I could also show you the logic analyzer data, you know, at one point in time in the future. That's when I'm doing a little bit more, um, you know, when I'm diagnosing and demonstrating a little bit more of, you know, how the hardware actually works. Because in this video, I just wanted to show you how the software was interfaced, but to really understand how the signals actually work, you know, and what the SHM is actually, uh, what the FSM is actually reading. Uh, I could do that at a later video where I can do a little bit more diagnosis on this particular sensor to get an understanding of, you know, what's happening at the logic level, at the logic analyzer level. So until next time, I hope this was helpful. You know, you can give the sensor a try. Uh, I'm still learning about it, but I do believe it can be very helpful. So until next time, please like if you like this video, subscribe and uh, please take care.